Next, we have Shai Shalom. The one thing he loves more than C++ is Python. It's just like, whoa, okay. Yeah. We got the room where you want them now. <laughs> Shai is a software engineer from Israel. In his spare time, he teaches high schoolers assembly as a first language. <laughs> Five minutes. Writing your own Python interpreter. Five minutes. So five minutes. Uh, English is not my first language, so um, I'll try to make this uh, brief. Um, so, what do we need to know about Python? Uh, it's an uh, interpreted language, dynamically typed, scripting, and uh, reference implementation is called CPython. It has a Boost Python uh, wrapper, nice, uh, nice wrapper. And when you run a uh, Python script, it's basically um, uh, com quickly compiled into bytecode, and then the bytecode is being run on, the, on an interpreter. So the bytecode is uh, pretty simple. It's a very simple um, stack machine. So if you take the, the first uh, statement there, C equals A plus B, and then it, uh, it's translated into push A and B, binary add pops and B adds them and pushes the result back into the stack, and then pop C pops the result back into uh, variable C. So pretty simple bytecode. Another key concept is that uh, Python has an object model. Everything is an object. We have a string, int, and even functions, classes, modules. Everything is an object. Everything is also reference counted. So if you have a variable, it's actually a reference to an object. Every object holds the number of references it has, similar to shared PTR. Um, so that's basically it, what, what everything you need to know about Python. So. <laughs> So what I wanted to do is to take some Python code and use C Python compiler to uh, compile it into bytecode and use my interpreter to run this uh, uh, bytecode. So uh, what happened? Mm, give it a second. Yeah, the cable. Uh, this one works. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Uh, uh, so this is a Windows running Mac. Um, no. So this turned out to be quite, uh, pretty simple. Uh, after about five days of work, I had something working, about uh, 2,000 line of code. So let's, let's see what it looks like. We have uh, an interpreter uh, insta instance there, and I can import some Python code into it. The Python code is being uh, compiled by the C Python compiler and then uh, execute it into the interpreter. So next thing I, ca I can do, once that's done, I can call into Python uh, via uh, C++ using this call method and then extract the result from the return object into uh, C++ again. So uh, I can also uh, add an, um, a wrapper for a, a C++ function and uh, define it into the uh, interpreter, and then I, I can call from C++ into Python and then back to C++ again. So this is uh, pretty nice. There's also syntax for wrapping a C++ class with a Python class and uh, defining some methods on it, on it and then uh, wrapping a C++ instance with a, with a Python instance and then calling these methods on, on the instance. So, um, so yeah, that's nice. So you can already uh, imagine what this call at the bottom uh, does. Um, so here it is, very straightforward, uh, very thick templates, uh, syntax for unwrapping the arguments and then calling this very distinctively named function run code. So um, run code is pretty much the heart of the implementation. Uh, this is the, the actual interpreter. It has a while loop that goes over the stream of the bytecode, opcode by opcode, and for every opcode, it uh, executes it with a big switch statement. Um, so we have there here a few, uh, a few of the opcodes. You, you can see pop and push, which manage the stack machine I mentioned. And uh, when Python code, code uh, uh, calls a function, it actually calls this run code recursively. So it uses the C++ uh, call stack as the Python call stack. Uh, so this is as opposed to a stackless Python Im implementation, which doesn't do that. Um, 
Next thing we need to do is implement the object models. We have an object base class and we have a string int, list and dictionary objects. Uh, each is implemented by their corresponding C++ types. And we also have a ref class that's used as a, as a reference wherever reference is needed. So it's basically a boost intrusive PTR which manages the, the ref count in, in the object class. Um, if we want to extract a, a value from such an object, we do a dynamic cast and then access the object. So this is where the dynamic typing of Python comes into a very literal sense. Um, yeah, so why would you actually want to do that? Um, why would you want to, to write such an interpreter? First, if your application needs a, a scripting language, it's much easier to write an interpreter than write a compiler. Um, Second, it can be extremely lightweight, like 2,000 lines of code can actually do quite a bit. And it, it can have uh, multiple instances, uh, as opposed to CPython, which has a single instance with global state. And you can have, have any kind of customizations added to it, like you can have a multi-threaded interpreter, where CPython is, uh, is basically single-threaded. And you can have any kind of memory management that you can uh, think of, um, maybe uh, as simple or as complex as you want. And uh, for myself, the, the, the object was to simply experiment a bit with C++11 and uh, have fun. So here's a gratuitous uh, photo of a wild animal, and uh, thank you. <laughs>